Right, Mark, this is the mess room. The toilets are through there. And as I said, help yourself the tea and toast whenever you're on a break. Just remember to put your money in the kitty every week. Right, this way. Right then, the fire alarm system. Now procedures for each station are the same. If the fire alarm activates, staff evacuate customers and themselves to a place of safety as quickly as possible. So it doesn't matter whether you're here at Central or James Street or whatever, you treat each deep level station the same. Now, there are five stations on the Mersey Rail network that are designated as subsurface or underground stations. These are Hamilton Square, James Street, Moorfields, Lime Street and Liverpool Central. The total length of tunnel on the Whittle Loop Line from Conway Park Tunnel Portal is three and three quarter miles. The distance from Hamilton Square to James Street is one mile, 308 yards. From James Street to Moorfields, 506 yards. From Moorfields to Lime Street, 1,034 yards. From Lime Street to Liverpool Central, 924 yards. And from Liverpool Central back to James Street, 814 yards. The total tunnel length on the Northern Line is one mile, 1,716 yards. The distance between Liverpool Central and Moorfields in either direction is 1,056 yards. Now in 1987, there was a fire at King's Cross Underground Station in London in which 31 people died. So in 1989, the Fire Precaution Regulations Act came into force. So what I'm about to tell you is all because of the King's Cross fire. So firstly, the fire alarm is set off when one of the detection devices is activated. Now these detection devices are situated throughout the station and consist of smoke detectors, heat detectors, beam detectors. The fire alarm panel calls for the fire service by an integral telephone line. At each subsurface station mark, there is a set of station emergency plans that can be used by the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. The plans are kept in specific locations at each station. On these plans you'll find the station layout, the station access and egress points, the dry riser and hydrant points, the fire points, smoke stop doors, the fire alarm panel, the location of the utilities such as gas, electricity and the sprinkler system. The alarm panel will indicate the whereabouts of the device that's been activated, so if the alarm has been triggered here in the booking hall, this light will come on, as well as the alarm light. As well as the lights, this LED, the status display window, will also tell us the whereabouts of the problem. It will also indicate any fault that's in the system. Again, one of these lights will light up to tell us. So let's say the smoke detector behind panel L2D020Z4 goes off by the escalator. This button will light and a printed record will also be given here. And below that is the zone plan for the station showing the fire alarm zones and each description. Now there can be many reasons for alarms going off. For example, the insulators under the conductor rail. We call them pots, can get dirty and greasy. Sparks or arcing can settle like rubbish which people chuck onto the track, setting off the alarm. So it's not always an emergency, but we have to treat it as an emergency and the station is evacuated immediately. On the underground stations, there are a total of 33 escalators and these are fitted with a sprinkler system. Each escalator is installed with heat detector cables, which connect to a control panel, which connects to the fire alarm panel. It informs the control panel, which then puts the system into first knock. An investigation will then be carried out by a member of staff. If a fire is evident, you use the yellow brake glass inside the machine room entrance, which will then operate the sprinkler system. The LHD repeater panel outside indicates which section of the escalator is affected. The escalators are kept running throughout the evacuation, unless of course they are the source of the fire. Now as soon as the alarm is raised here, the panel alerts the Mersey Rail Control Centre and the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. The local staff then make a backup call to them. 20 seconds after the alarm has been raised, pre-recorded public announcements will be made asking the passengers to evacuate the station. Do not use the escalator exits. Do not use the escalator exits. 
These pre-recorded announcements will direct the passengers to the exits by the safest route. Now we have a test every Sunday morning when you'll get to see and hear everything in operation, OK? Yeah. At the same time as the PA announcements start, the fire alarm panel switches power off to the magnetic locks securing certain exits. So the lighter coloured barriers spring open, allowing easier escape access. Soon we'll be getting new automatic barriers like these. As well as the barriers opening, the magnets holding the buttonhole doors were released to stop smoke from spreading. So if it's a fire on the Whittle line, then these fire doors will close. Passengers can also leave the station by using the train, of course, if there is one in the platform. Above the doors, you'll see various signs light up, showing safe exit routes. Also, on the outside of the building, strobe lights light up warning of an emergency and do not enter signs are illuminated. One member of staff will close the booking hall exterior doors to prevent any more passengers entering the station. The passenger lift will immediately come up from the platform level and come to ground level, where the doors will open and any passengers can then exit by the emergency exit gates outside. The lift will then shut down and not work again until the fire alarm has been reset. With me so far? Yeah. On the platform, doors at one end will open and emergency exit signs will illuminate. These exits are so passengers don't need to go up the escalator to the booking hall level. Now James Street Station and Hamilton Square Station, there are other alternative exits which are not open to the public during normal hours. So if you're at these stations, you may be asked to open the gates to these exits so you'll need to get acquainted with them. At these stations, access to the platforms is normally by lift only. Now, as the person in charge of evacuation, I'll issue instructions to my staff on their evacuation duties and walk through the instructions with them. The instructions are also posted in the notice case by the mess room. I'll ensure the barriers are open, check the amenity rooms, clear the booking hall and direct customers out of the station. When the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Services arrive, I meet them and direct them to the location of the incident. I will then carry out a roll call to make sure you're all back safely. If you come across a passenger who, for whatever reason, won't leave the station, you ask them to leave three times. If they still refuse, you leave them where they are, inform the control centre by the help point and inform the person in charge on your return to the booking hall or a fire officer. If you come across a door which you have to enter, before you open it, touch the door to see if it's hot. If it is, then that's probably where the fire is, so don't open it. Now, the most important thing to remember when you're doing an evacuation of the station is that your safety and the safety of the customers comes first. You also have to think about the circumstances and your capabilities before you attempt to tackle a fire with an extinguisher. If you have any doubts, get out and stay out. A triple F type fire extinguishers can be found around the station in booking offices, mess rooms, platforms, offices and booking halls. CO2, carbon dioxide type extinguishers, are mostly found in the machine room. Special care must be taken when using these to prevent ice burns. Understand? You may have noticed inside and outside of the station cupboards with dry riser outlet written on them. These allow the fire service to pump water through a system of pipes into the station. At the side of the fire alarm panel is the local public address system. You can make announcements throughout the station using this. It's easier than shouting. On each platform, there's a railway telephone, as well as help points. These help points are also in booking holes and passageways. It gives the public direct contact with the control centre at Sandhills. Adjacent to the station entrance, there's a box affectionately known as the Badger Line. The emergency services plug their own self-powered phones into the sockets. There's another similar plug in phone points at platform level. Now, if there's a fire or some other kind of emergency in the tunnel, the train driver can call the signaller or the electrical control operator by attaching these two clips to the two copper wires that run along the tunnel wall at train cab height. The cab-to-cab -cab handset can then be used to call for help. It's known as the tech system, and it's fitted on the northern line between Leeds Street and St James No. 4 tunnel. This tunnel is situated between Liverpool Central and Brunswick Station, and from Birkenhead Park to Birkenhead Central, inclusive of the Whittle Loop lines. Apart from fires, we could have other reasons to evacuate, such as a suspect bag or package. We call them, now don't laugh Mark, funny bags. We'd also have to evacuate if there was a bomb warning or a serious accident. In these circumstances, we evacuate just as if there is a fire, 
but we have to close doors, make announcements, open the barriers without the aid of the fire alarm panel. And this time, the police will take charge and give guidance. We also advise the MEC and keep them updated. If you come across a passenger with a disability, a member of staff will accompany that person safely off the station. For example, if the passengers are platform level, the member of staff and the disabled passenger can board the first train to the next station. Now the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service will arrive three and a half to four minutes after they receive the call. They usually pull up over there and the person in charge of the station will meet the senior fire officer attending. Easily identified because he's wearing a white helmet. Explain the situation and show the fire alarm panel, which shows where the alarm has gone off. Remember, a printout has been activated also telling us where the problem is. The Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service are now in charge of operations. Once the senior fire officer is happy all is safe and well, he gives us permission to reset the fire alarm panel. To do this, we set the key in the panel switch and turn from inhibit to access. Under the status display window, the silence buzzer, silence alarm and reset buttons are pressed in that order. Now if the panel fails to reset, remove the key from the panel switch and insert it into the beam switch. Turn to reset, remove key and insert it back into the panel switch. Repeat, press silence buzzer, silence alarm and reset buttons in that order. OK, well that's it. Don't worry, it doesn't happen that often. OK, well, uh, let me introduce you to Steve. Steve, help. Toast. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, do you want to go for a reset? Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks for coming. It's all right, no problem. Oh! Well done, matey. Do you remember how to set the fire alarm? Uh, yeah. Go for it. Thanks for coming, lads. It's okay, mate. We'll leave it with you. Cheers. 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 Cheers again. <laughs> <laughs> Said to give me your toast now. <laughs> After an emergency, there are several things which you must do. After the all clear, always advise the MEC. Make a suitable entry in the fire safety logbook. Submit a report to your line manager, and if any fire damage has occurred, advise Lawn Stewart and the MEC. Mm -hmm.